Welcome to Southeast Michigan. I'm Dr. Russ. This is part two of our uh, videos on using lethal traps and uh, the bait that goes with them. And uh, then tomorrow, the third one will be uh, going up into the attic and actually hunting some destructive critters. Uh, this is not my hat. <laughs> this is the hat of the enemy. Uh, Viet, uh, North Vietnamese officer wore this hat and they blew whistles much like a policeman would at an intersection. And that told the Vietnamese whether to go left, right, charge, retreat, whatever. I was an infantry officer. Uh, during that time, I started with 44 men. I ended up with 28. Uh, fortunately, it was a long time ago. But anyway, I saved the memorabilia. Uh, that top shelf is not Vietnam memorabilia. That uh, top shelf is uh, 20 hunts that took place out in uh, Wyoming in Comanche territory, not far from where General Custer was circled and destroyed. Well, this is my hat. And let's talk about lethal traps now. Yesterday, we talked about live traps, live solutions. Lethal traps work very similar to like these mouse traps and uh, uh, rat traps, etc. But the bait is put here, and if the mouse or rat uh, comes up and starts uh, chewing, they can get that food and be gone. But the moment they put any weight on it, they're caught. And that's really the secret of putting weight on these traps. Um, caught. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, we have to, on all traps, put the bait, the food, beyond the animal so that he'll come up and put his feet on these plates. Uh, so here's a lethal trap right here. Uh, by the way, these, we don't have any rats here, but we do have our share of chipmunks. And that's what we have those traps for. This is called a long spring trap right here. Uh, it's made by a company named Duke who has them made in, uh, I think it's Korea. But uh, Duke's probably the biggest name in traps. This is the long spring. And when they step on this, of course, you got to have your food out beyond it. So they're stepping and going out like that. Uh, it'll go off and catch them then. The chains are there to make sure that the animal doesn't get away. This is a DP, a dog proof trap. And you can see that when uh, a dog's foot rarely can get down here and it can never get clear down to here, but a raccoon, possum, can. And so that wire comes and catches that foot uh, with this spring. It's stuck in the ground, and we put bait way down in the bottom of it. Raccoon goes crazy with curiosity, and they get their arm back clear up to the armpit to get down in there, uh, catching a raccoon or an animal like a raccoon, but not a dog. I, I already hit this one. This is called a jumper because it, it jumped when I uh, took this out. It'll take two people to get this out right now. Uh, but it's also called something else. It's called a coil spring trap. It's a Duke two, and, and every one of these are made in different sizes. So you can get like a Duke two and a four and a six, etc. Uh, this is a body trap, and this goes off when the belly of the beaver or whatever goes through. These two sides come up and whap and gets it. Uh, let me show you this one. Uh, this is a burner that takes a can of propane. And it was actually made to go down the sidewalk and get ice off the sidewalk, but it was way too slow for me. I put it away thinking I could never use it for anything. Well, I found out it can go down into a snake hole, or it can go down into a woodchuck hole, and it can cook a whole group down there. Uh, I mean, a 
flame could come out this big on the end. So uh, I found it to be very, very helpful uh, with that. Uh, by the way, we use this um, uh, iron uh, to push this down in the ground and uh, uh, get it stuck there so that the animal can't get away. You see that Ryobi drill over there uh, on top of that last cage. That allows me to drill a hole real easily down into uh, the side of the trap and then drop this chain down there. And that keeps it down there in good shape. These are all poisons over here. My favorite is this one right here. It's a yellow bag. It's sold, I think, at Home Depot, but not at Lowe's. But uh, I clip an end, and three times every summer, I take a bag of this and I walk around the house, leaving a white trail. It's white, almost like baby powder in here. Stops mosquitoes, mice, you name it. It's fantastic. I really believe in this one. Here's some bait for uh, mice, etc. Of course, you got to be very careful. Make sure that the the uh, kids and grandkids aren't anywhere near them. This is an interesting one. This is uh, like a, uh, a fog spray. It uh, comes in two or three to a box, but you take it into rooms and attics and you bend over and when you hit this down, she does a spray. It works good unless the spray comes right up into your mouth and then you find out exactly what a mosquito feels like. I, I did it wrong once. My wife had to help me out of the house. Um, uh, these uh, bug sprays, I use these uh, around the uh, deck at night when we have a barbecue or something, just keeps everything out and away, if you will. Um, the air gun. I've had people write to me about air guns and say, uh, uh, my problem is, and I had a guy just write to me and he said, uh, my uncle wants me to take care of mice and rats in his new pole barn, but he doesn't want any damage done to the pole barn. <laughs> Which air gun should I use? And I said, man, any air gun might put a hole in that barn. So let me suggest this. I said, I want you to build a set, a corner with some nice, you know, two by eights or twelves or tens or something and uh, put your, your bait in there and then get at the other end to shoot them. And as long as you're shooting into that trap, if you will, uh, you don't have to worry about any damage to the barn. Uh, I used to use slingshots for, uh, not to kill animals, I would shoot into the thicket. I got a lot of wild boar out of thickets, uh, deer out of thickets, uh, but I've since learned just how accurate they can be. And uh, this is a good accurate one. I'll, I'll show you, it's got the counterweights, which you put it like this. Um, when you do, you look right down this tubing at your target. You always bring this right up to the same spot. And you'd be surprised that after just five, six shots, how accurate you can become. Uh, I practice with uh, 50 caliber marbles. <laughs> There's bigger marbles if you want. But when I actually hunt, I use ball bearings. And I have to tell you, the, uh, the velocity of a slingshot is around 300 feet a second. But with ball bearings, that's a, that does a lot of damage and it has the capability of killing. Air guns, uh, uh, 22 caliber here, has a velocity of about 1,000 feet a second. You don't want to go up, up over 1,050 feet a second because that's when you break the sound of the speed of sound and you get, uh, you know, the, the barrel modulated can keep the sound down, but not the wing as it uh, travels across the barn or wherever. Uh, bows and arrows, crossbows shoot uh, 300, about 280 up to about 325, very deadly. Um, cross, uh, regular bows will shoot 260 up to about 300. Crossbows shoot a little faster than that speed kills. Um, and uh, I always talk about the trail cameras. This one has a nice antenna, so 
I can get the pictures anytime I want looking at my cell phone uh, at two in the morning. I found six deer. I'll show that to you perhaps in the next video. Uh, six deer out there where I was yesterday um, uh, with the bird feeders. They were out there eating by those bird feeders and I checked them out in the dark there. I think uh, you need traps <clears throat> and uh, tracks and you need to uh, uh, study tracks. You know, people get a book on mysteries and drama and stuff like that. <clears throat> I think these are actually more interesting to me, but you get actual pictures of what a track looks like and you know that this happens to be a coyote. Uh, what Peterson Field Guide did, interestingly enough, is they not only have the pictures of the tracks in mud and, and, and dirt, but also what we call the scat. And uh, this is the poop. Almost always has some hair in it where dogs don't have it in theirs. Uh, so that's, that's helpful. So once we have a good location, a good presentation, a good set, now we wanna make sure we have the right bait. When we're talking about these live, it's just pretty much bait, a live catch. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a bait and a lure or a tractant in our uh, lethal traps. But I, there's so many, I, I just wanted to bring uh, a little cheat sheet here and read from it. Um, mice, rats, uh, chipmunks, uh, they all get peanut butter and a little bird seed. Somebody told me what a chipmunk was. I said, what is, what is a chipmunk? He said, it's a rat that uh, won a lottery, but it was, it was such a small winnings, they only had enough to buy a small fur coat. <laughs> That's what a chipmunk is. Uh, bats in the attic, there is no bait for bats. See, they're out at night and they really clean up a lot of mosquitoes and insects in the air. And we don't have that as a bait. And that's the only thing they're interested in. And they wanna catch it in the air. They want their radar to catch it moving in the air. So if you feel you've got to get rid of bats, particularly if they're making a mess in your attic, there's a couple of ways you do it. One is you wait till they leave and get out at night. And then you go in and with your ladders, you've already checked and you know how they're getting back in come morning. You've got to seal those areas up uh, with a rivet gun, some screws, a screwdriver, whatever. Uh, some pieces of wood, pieces of tin, pieces of uh, aluminum siding, vinyl siding, but you got to close those holes up. That's one way. The second way is you can actually build a, uh, a bat house. Now a bat house looks like there's shutters and they like to fly and get on up in those shutters and, and stay in there. It's a very narrow house about this wide. And uh, you know, 50 to 75 bats can fit in one of those things. People who like bats and want bats to take care of the mosquitoes, they build them for that. But in this case, we're trying to get rid of bats and do it in a live fashion. So we let them come in, they get into those, they will fill it up in a, about a month. And uh, particularly if you've blocked up your, your attic. And then uh, during the day, you take that and we head up, up, up the road five, 10 miles and put them out there someplace. Those are the only ways I know of getting rid of bats. The squirrels, not just peanut butter and bird seed, but uh, cracked corn, uh, pieces of corn can go into a plate and bring them in. Uh, muskrats, muskrats, um, kind of like a small uh, beaver, if you will. A muskrat uh, likes parsnip. I would use parsnip as that uh, bait. Crows, oh, I dislike crows. I dislike the sound they make. I dislike what they do when they come. They, uh, you know, they're up in those trees. They can take out a, a beautiful songbird, a, a blue jay, a cardinal's nest, take those eggs. I really dislike crows. Um, so trying to catch them live is tough. Uh, I actually, I don't know a, a way to do it. I do know how to take them out legally, but not live. Um, good news is in most states, they're open season 12 months. They're almost open 12 months here in Michigan. Raccoons. Uh, raccoons get into your garbage when they tear that garbage up. Uh, when we trap for raccoons, uh, what we do is we're going to use some marshmallows, some canned cat food, 
some dry cat food, some sardines. Well, when you use sardines, they come in two cans. Uh, one has got water and one has got oil. Do not use the oil. They do not eat oily things. We're going to use the oil as a attractant in another situation. But in live, we want sardines here uh, in water. You're not going to go after raccoons without catching some feral cats. Feral is a cat that just lives out there in the wild. Used to live in somebody's house doesn't anymore. You'll also catch some house cats, people who let their cats go out and you'll catch them and uh, you're going to lose neighbors if you haul them away. So you've got to let them go. Um, skunks. Oh my goodness. They get underneath decks. And um, uh, one of the things you do is you, uh, you throw some mothballs underneath the decks. That's one of the ways that their, their smell, they don't like that, so they will frequently leave. If you can actually see their hole, you try to take a, a tool and push the mothballs down in there. Another one is you can buy coyote urine. And you put some urine in there, you get on the deck and spray. They don't like that. Coyotes can kill skunks very easily. So that'll chase them out. Snakes. Oh, there's a dozen ways to catch them dead, <laughs> and I've done that. Uh, here in Michigan, we have a Mississauga. It's our one poisonous rattlesnake. Fortunately, it's on the small size, but it's unfortunately, it's on the small size. And we have to uh, 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 trap it with a, a, a hoe, a shovel up on the neck and hold it down, and then you can grab it. And if we're catching it live, we put it in a bag. If we're catching it dead, we just continue with uh, cutting the, the head right on off. There's other ways to catch snakes. Uh, a PVC pipe, so big around. You put some wires down at one end and as they get to that end, trying to find a dead mouse that you've trapped, uh, uh, it can then capture them and they can't get back out. So now you have this snake in a PVC pipe, that's one way to capture them. Woodchucks, big enemy of mine. Uh, past that area I was standing on at the beginning of this video uh, are walls of boulders. These boulders are heavy. One man can't lift them. Three men shouldn't be lifting it. A bobcat should. I'm talking about the mechanical tractor bobcat. Uh, I've had those things just boom, disappear. Why? Because of uh, woodchuck made home underneath it. In an earlier vis uh, video, I talked about a friend of mine who drove his tractor into a garage. He had a brand new cement floor and the tractor fell because five woodchuck families were living underneath it. You get woodchucks in these cages alive and you get them with uh, dry dog food, canned dog food, greens, vegetables, red cabbage, red tomatoes, red onions. They obviously have something about red and that will attract them. You put always some outside, a whole bunch on the inside and they're very reluctant to go inside. It may take two or three nights of visits, your camera will tell you, before you uh, have them in and capture them. Uh, bobcats, bobcats are out there. There are professional trappers that get as many as a hundred a year. Whew. I didn't think there was a hundred in a state, let alone a, a trapper uh, could, could catch a catch hundred, but they can. And they use regular cat food. Um, they use uh, marshmallows. They use cat food that's wet, meaning in a can, they use it dry. Um, sardines in water, remember they never like, wild animals do not like the oil. They like to be attracted by the smell of oil, but then they don't eat it. Uh, so we don't use oil as the bait, we use it as a lure. Badger, I gotta tell you, badgers are mean. Uh, we have a college football team here in the state of Michigan called the Wolverines. Uh, I'm told that a Wolverine has more fight in it per pound than a grizzly bear. And I know how much fight a grizzly bear has. I've, I've hunted them in Alaska. Uh, they are just outright mean. They can just tear a log and just shred it up. 
the badger's a small cousin to the wolverine. So um, you use some uh, raw chicken, some um, um, cooked chicken, those sardines again, a dog food, cat food, fox, fox. Gosh, they can be beautiful. Red fox, silver fox. I caught a, a cross fox when he was half red, half, half silver. We had a parent from each side of the fence there. Um, but they're fast. And if your cages aren't working perfectly quick, that fox can turn around and be gone in no time. Um, coyote, he's also fast, but he likes dog food, dry dog food. And there's some specialties about coyotes and I'll show you how we catch them. But they, coyote be these larger cages. Beaver, I don't know how to catch a beaver live. I know how to catch him dead, lethal. These are body traps. And when their stomach goes over this right here, these two sides come up and pin him and he's, he, he dies. Um, particularly if you have a chain and weight that will take him on out into the deep and hold him under, you'll catch him that way. <clears throat> uh, wild boar, I've shot two wild boar. I haven't trapped a wild boar, but you need a barrel for something like that and you're gonna to have to make it yourself. I don't think they sell them. So just some ideas of what you, you use. Uh, you're either gonna to have to figure out after you lose two or three animals, or you can use a trail camera and find out exactly how you lost that animal. Mm -hmm. Well, you're gonna to like tomorrow's video. Uh, this is a uh, Humorex uh, air gun and it's very very silent and it's it's just a 22 I uh, can regulate the power down be up in the attic so I don't do any damage to my my uh, attic has an adjustable cheek piece but I can get up there in the attic and uh, when you find out what I built in the attic you'll you'll see that it's uh, quite easy to hunt in my attic without any problems but we're actually gonna go on a hunt tomorrow. Let me tell you something else that we're gonna do in tomorrow's video. When you set up any of these traps, uh, we call it a set or uh, a presentation, if you will, for the animal. And uh, if it's not set up right, you're not gonna get him. It's gotta be a good one. My wife and three friends were in a uh, a Mediterranean restaurant several months ago. And while they were eating, a cockroach fell from a ceiling into one of the ladies' plates. <laughs> you can imagine the screaming and the stir and they didn't have to pay their bill and they left and the owner wanted them to come back and try it again and they never did. Wrong presentation, if you will. So uh, we'll talk about the presentation and how to build that set around these traps and specifically, besides going up in the attic and hunting, we're going to uh, uh, talk about the seven major mistakes that people make trapping animals, destructive critters. I hope you give us a thumbs up. I hope uh, you continue to uh, watch our videos. We're really surprised at what's been going on. Um, we only started a little over a year ago and uh, my uh, friends in high places have told me that we are breaking all kinds of records. With just one year behind us, uh, we've set all kinds of records. We started out with just one video and two weeks later another, and two weeks later another, and at the end of one year, we had 26 videos. At the end, not at the beginning. And we had a thousand subscribers. That was three months ago. We have a thousand four hundred subscribers now over 150,000 views, viewers all over the world. I personally answer their comments each morning. I like that, I like to do that. It's not a secretary, it's me. And uh, I probably need to just share some of those stories. But they're very, very interesting hearing from people all over the world. And uh, if you'd like to be a subscriber and be first to find out about our next video instead of last, please subscribe, please give us a thumbs up, and we hope that all of these help you be air gun sharp.